second factor uh, on uh, selecting uh, best uh, regressor model. Uh, suppose uh, you have a problem with uh, a large number of uh, regressors and uh, one response variable. Uh, having large number of uh, regressors, uh, uh, you may wonder uh, whether some of them are uh, irrelevant for the response variable and uh, whether uh, those irrelevant uh, regressor variables can be uh, removed from the model uh, without affecting the uh, model predictive power. Okay. So, by uh, the best uh, regression model uh, in, in multiple linear regression uh, setup, uh, we mean uh, a model that can explain the variability in uh, y and at the same time uh, it includes uh, as few regressors as possible because you know uh, more regressors uh, in a model uh, if you have more regressors in the model then uh, greater the cost uh, of collecting the data and uh, also uh, the cost for the maintenance uh, increases. Well, so uh, the known algorithms for uh, selecting the best regression model, they are uh, basically classified into uh, two uh, classes. One is called uh, all possible regression approach and the other one is uh, called uh, sequential uh, selection. So, in all possible regression approach what uh, we did is that if you have a problem with uh, you know uh, k minus 1 uh, regressors, uh, then you consider uh, all the 2 to the power of k minus 1 uh, linear models and uh, the next step is that we fit those models and uh, uh, we evaluate them uh, with respect to some criteria. So, the criteria could be uh, the coefficient of multiple determination which is uh, called uh, you know R square, the criteria could be uh, MS uh, residual, uh, it could be adjusted uh, coefficient of multiple determination that I am going to talk about this one today and also it could be the uh, Mallow's statistics that is denoted by CP. Okay. Uh, let me uh, talk about uh, the criteria uh, for evaluating the subset regression model, uh, one criteria is uh, residual mean square. So, we denote it by MS residual. Okay. So, what we observed in the last class is that uh, SS residual P, by this one we mean that uh, uh, the residual sum of square for a model involving P minus 1 regressors. So, this one decreases as the number of regressors increases, but the same is not necessarily true for MS residual. So, MS residual uh, uh, may increase uh, if you increase the number of regressors also. That is what we, we, we observed in the last class. Now, well what is MS residual? MS residual is 
MS residual associate associated with the model involving p minus 1 regressors is equal to SS residual p by n minus p. And of course, uh, you know lower value of MS residual P indicates better fit. Okay, so now uh, we will what we will do is that we will plot uh, MS residual minimum MS residual against P. Okay, so, the P is the number of unknown parameters in the model and uh, we will plot minimum MS residual along the y axis. Right. So, what we do is that uh, see given a p uh, all possible models with p minus 1 regressors are evaluated and the model uh, giving minimum MS residual P is tabulated. Okay, so, to explain this one, let me uh, recall my uh, one example uh, we discussed in the last class. So, we will be considering the same example. The Hold a cement data. So, here we have four regressors and one response variable. So, here k is equal to k minus 1 is equal to 4, k minus 1 denotes the number of. So, here k minus 1 is equal to 4. So, k minus 1 stands for the number of regressors. Well, and then what we do is that we write down the models, all possible models. So, here this is the model I said with no regressors. So, the number of regressor variable is equal to uh, equal to 0 here, equal to 0 here. Uh, so, that is why p, uh, p is the number of unknown. So, there is only one unknown that is the intercept. So, p is equal to 1 for this model. Now, these are the model involving one regressor or we will say that this, these are called uh, one regressor model that is why p equal to 2 because the number of unknowns for these mod models is equal to 2. These are the model with involving two regressors that is why p equal to 3. And, uh, these are the model involving three regressors and p is equal to 4 and this is the full model involving all the four uh, regressor variables that is why p is equal to 5. And then first we write down all possible models and then we take one model and we fit uh, that model. Okay. 
that is what we did in the last class. You talk, you considered the model beta naught beta one x one plus epsilon, and uh, you compute the SS total, SS residual, SS regression, and uh, you write down the ANOVA table. Here is the ANOVA table for the first model. And similarly, you have to do you have to do the same. Um, um, same job for all possible uh, for all the 16 uh, possible models. Well, now what is the what is the MS residual here? The MS res residual for this model is 115.1. So that is mentioned here. The MS residual for this model is 115.06 more, precise, more precisely. And similarly, you fit the second model, you get the ANOVA table, you find out the MS residual value. So, this way you uh, compute the MS res residual value for all the models involving one regressor for all the models involving two regressor variables, these are the MS residual and similarly for the other models also, you compute the MS residual value. Now, what we do is that, uh, you know the minimum MS residual value uh, in this class is uh, 80.35. So, we tabulate this one and the minimum in this class is 5.7. So, we will tabulate this one in our uh, uh, in this graph here. So, for p equal to 1, for p equal to 1, p equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, well for p equal to 1 man, that means there is no p equal to 1 means this model, no regressor, the MS residual value is 2 to 6, right. So, suppose this is 10, 20, 30 and then it is uh, you know maybe 200 here. So, uh, for p equal to 1 it is 2 to 6. So, somewhere here. Now, for p equal to for p equal to 1 for p equal to 1 it is 2 to 6, for p equal to 2 it is 80 point, for p equal to 2 it is 80 point 35. So, you plot uh, somewhere here, I am not very particular about uh, this scaling. Now, for p equal to 3 it is 5.7, so somewhere here. For p equal to 4, for p equal to 4, it is uh, the minimum one is 5.33, okay. So, and for p equal to 5, it is 5.98. So, this is 5.33 and 5.98. Okay. So, what happened here, here is that this value is, uh, uh, is for MS residual 3 is equal to 
five point seven m s residual four for p equal to four it is five point three three and m s residual five for p equal to five it is five point nine eight. So, what happens here is that initially you know initially m s residual decreases and then it stabilize for some time and then it may increase also. So, here it is increasing little bit from 5.33 to 5.98. So, uh, this you know because for SS residual it is not true, SS residual is always a decreasing function, but uh, that the same is not true for the uh, SS residual uh, sorry the same is not true for MS residual. So, it may increase also. Okay. So, if, if the newly uh, added regression variable is not relevant to the um, to the response variable, then uh, then the reduction you know the reduction in SS regression is not sufficient to compensate the one degree of freedom loss in the denominator. That is why M s residual uh, increases also some for some time. Well, so what we do here, so the we choose a value p such that m s residual p is almost equal to the m s residual for the full model. Okay. Or, or we choose a value of p such that value of p where m s residual p turns upward. So, here uh, uh, these are the I mean uh, selection criteria. Either you choose a p, a p in fact it's the number of regressors in the in the uh, regression model p minus one. So you choose a p such that the M S residual p is uh, almost close to the M S residual for the full model. Otherwise you choose a p such that uh, such that from that point M S residual p turns upward. So, here, here you can see that you know M s residual uh, decreases till p equal to 4 and then it turns upward because uh, for 5 it is again uh, the value is more than uh, the value for p equal to 4. So, here it turns upward. So, here you can choose uh, p equal to uh, the meaning of this one is that, uh, so this M s residual criteria suggests that you go for uh, the model involving the regressor x 1, x 2, x 4. Uh, also, you know this uh, other two models like the model involving x 1, x 2, x 3 and the model involving x 1, x 3 and x 4, uh, they have also you know uh, the comparable value of M s residual. So, either you can go for this model or uh, the these two models and if you want if you prefer you know uh, the model with uh, two variables then of course, uh, you have to go for the model with which involves x 1, 
and x 2. Okay, so, this is how we uh, uh, evaluate the uh, model using the uh, MS residual criteria. Now, next uh, we are going to talk about uh, one more criteria uh, that is called uh, adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. and this one is denoted by r bar square. Okay. So, let me uh, just uh, recall uh, r square, r square is the coefficient of multiple determination which is equal to s s regression by s s total and this one is equal to if I say okay, this one is equal to 1 minus SS residual by SST. Now, if I say that this R square is associated with the model which involves P minus 1 regressors, then I will put P here, 1 P here and 1 P here. Now, what we know is that SS residual P always decreases as P increases. So, from here you can say that this implies, this st statement implies that coefficient of determination r square p, this always increases as p increases. So, from here uh, you know we can say that r square p or r square is is not a good measure of the quality of fit. Uh, let me explain why because uh, see whether the newly inserted or newly inclu included uh, regressor variable is uh, relevant to the model or not, irrespective of that fact, uh, whatever regressor variable you include, SS residual always decreases and uh, R square always increases with the uh, when the number of regressor variable is uh, a number of regressor variable increases. So, that is why you know uh, r square is r square cannot uh, uh, distinguish between between whether the newly uh, added regressor variable is uh, uh, relevant for the model or it is irrelevant for the model. So, that is why r square is or r square or s s residual is not a, a good measure to uh, check the quality of uh, fit. Well, so that is why what we define is that we, def uh, we introduce uh, adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. So, what is that? Uh, this R p bar square, this is the adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. The only difference is that this here, you know, we replace this S S residual P by M S residual by M S residual P. And here we replace the S S T by M S T. And then this can be written as now this adjusted uh, 
you know r square can be written in terms of r square. So, this one is equal to 1 minus what is m s residual when there are p minus 1 regressors in the model. I can write that as s s residual by the degree of freedom n minus p. So, this is nothing but m s residual p. Right. Now, what is SST? SST sorry, MST, MST is nothing but SST by the degree of freedom is n minus 1. So, this one is equal to 1 minus n minus 1 by n minus p into S S residual P by S S T and this one is nothing but you know 1 minus R square. So, this can be written as 1 minus n minus 1 by n minus P into 1 minus R P square. And since you know here we have replaced the S S residual by M S residual, as I said before that uh, M S residual uh, will not necessarily always decrease as P increases. Uh, so, here from there you can say that you no know, R P square, you can observe that R P bar square uh, value will not necessarily increases increase with the addition of any regressor. So, that is why uh, this adjusted coefficient of multiple determination, it is a uh, better measure than the uh, usual R square. Now, uh, let me just illustrate uh, uh, for uh, this model how to, uh, how to get this uh, adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. Uh, we have the fitted model and ANOVA table for the first model, uh, well then what is the adjusted uh, coefficient of multiple determination for this model. Okay. So, there p equal to for this model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So, here number of unknowns is equal to 2. So, p equal to 2. So, basically I am computing r 2 bar square for this model, for this specific model. So, this one is equal to 1 minus n minus 1 that is 13 minus 1 12 by n minus p n is equal to 13 for that uh, you know uh, hold uh, cement data. So, n minus p is equal to 11 and uh, 1 minus r square r 2 square. Okay. So, what is the value of this r 2 square? Uh, the value was uh, 53.4, 53.4 percent. Okay. Yeah, so, basic this one is nothing but this one is nothing but uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.534. Okay. Uh, so, R2 square is nothing but R2 square is nothing but SS regression by SS total, which is equal to 1450 by 2715. Please refer my previous uh, class. So, this one is equal to 0.5. 
So, this value is equal to 1 minus 12 by 11, 1 minus 0.534, which is going to be equal to 0 0.492. So, this way, so this value of the adjusted coefficient of multiple determination for the first model is 0 0.49. So, here, here is I am writing in percent. So, it is uh, instead of 0 0.492, I am writing 49.2 percent. Okay. So, similarly, you feed the second model, uh, you get the uh, you will get the, uh, the value of adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. Similarly, you do for all the model here and uh, for all the model involving 3 regressors and 4 regressors, these are the values. Right. So, what uh, we do is that we plot uh, uh, coefficient of adjusted coefficient of multiple determination. Uh, against the value of uh, p okay So, uh, here also you all possible models with p minus 1 regressors are evaluated and the model giving maximum R p bar square is tabulated. So, of course, you know uh, uh, higher value uh, of adjusted coefficient of multiple determinations indicates a better fit. That is why we, we consider the maximum value from, uh, from each class r p bar square. Well, so what we know is that the maximum okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and let me put uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right. Uh, let me uh, have the values. Uh, so, r p equal to 1, when p equal to 1, the value is equal to 0. Okay. When p equal to 2, uh, the maximum value is 64.5. Okay. When p equal to 3, the maximum value is 97.5. When p equal to 4, the maximum maximum value is 97.6 okay? and here 97.3. So, basic basically we will tabulate uh, these values. Uh, so, for 0 p equal to 1 it is 0, for p equal to 2 it is uh, 64.5. So, somewhere here for p equal to 3 the value is 97.5. So, it is somewhere here for p equal to 4 the value is 97.6 uh, it is 
six and for p equal to five it is ninety seven point three okay so here you can see you know it it is not necessarily it is always increasing it it can uh, this uh, value of adjusted rp square uh, can decrease also sometime okay so it suggests that the selection criteria is that you select a p where rp square uh, reaches maximum okay so what uh, according to this uh, coefficient of multiple determination uh, among the two regressor models uh, this one is the best uh, the model involving x1 and x2 and uh, among the three regressors model uh, both are good you know see oh, i mean all three are good um, model involving x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x4 x1 x3 and x4 uh, they all have a very high uh, value of uh, adjusted coefficient of multiple determination right uh, and uh, see the difference here it is 97.6 and for the two model uh, for the two regressor variable model the, the value is 97.5 so uh, there is a little gain in terms of this adjusted coefficient of multiple determination if you add one more variable with this uh, say if you add x3 with this model then the value is uh, getting increased by 0.1 so before it was 95.97.5 now if you add uh, you know along with x1 x2 if you add either 3 or 4 uh, the the increase is not that significant so uh, I mean, I, I personally, uh, I will go for uh, this this model, you know, x1, the model uh, with two variables x1 and x2, that is enough, because there is no significant increase in the uh, value of the adjusted coefficient of multiple determination, if you add one more regressor variable here. Uh, well, uh, next, uh, we will be talking about uh, one more uh, uh, criteria that is uh, called uh, Mallow's statistic and it is uh, denoted by CP. Okay. So, this statistic measures the overall bias or mean square error in the fitted model. So, by the mean square error uh, is measured by this one, uh, this one is y i hat minus e y, this one uh, y i hat is the ith fitted value. 
right and what is E y? This is uh, the expected response, uh, this is the expected response. for the regression, I mean the for the regression model, I mean the full model, regression model. Okay. And the difference, so the difference between the fitted uh, value and the expected value uh, is the error you square it, so it becomes square error. And then the mean is, you know, you take the mean means expected value of this one. Well, and this is for the ith observation, you do you sum it over i equal to 1 to n. And this one is standardized by dividing it by the sigma square. Well, so this is uh, called the mean square error and uh, it can be proved that, uh, that mean square error is this quantity can be estimated by S S residual for the model for the model involving p minus 1 uh, regressors by MS residual and this is for the full model of course, okay, minus n plus 2 p and this one is denoted by, see I am not, I am not going into the detail of uh, this, you know how to get uh, why C p is a, is an uh, estimate of this mean square error. Okay that is all. Now, uh, here we need to observe uh, something like uh, first one is uh, this M S residual is, uh, is computed using all the regressors in the model and S S residual P is computed for a model with only p minus 1 regressors. So, we, we, we know about this notation. Now, what uh, we need to observe something here, what is the value of uh, C p for the full model? Okay. So, here is the definition, I mean here is the expression for C p. Now, well, let me write again C p equal to S S residual when the model involving for the model involving p minus 1 regressors and this is M S residual for the full model minus n plus 2 p and p is the number of uh, unknown parameters in the model. Now, when when p equal to k, that means the number of the number of regressors regressors in the model, in the model is k minus 1. Okay. So, when if, if p equal to k, then of course, S S residual p is S S residual for the full model, right. Then what is the value of C p when p equal to k? That means, what is the value of C k? 
So, C k is for the full model, C k is S s residual, you can write in bracket k that means the S s residual in fact for the full model by M s residual minus n plus 2 k. Okay. So, here uh, this is nothing but n minus k minus n plus 2 k, which is equal to k. Well, so what we observed is that for p equal to k, c k equal to k. That means, for the full model the c k value is uh, is close to I mean is in fact it is uh, c k value is equal to k and uh, uh, you can you can note that the low c p value indicates better fit better fit okay so our selection criteria for you know for the model here is that uh, of course a small value of cp uh, is desirable and also the cp should be close to i mean cp uh, is small mean it, it's close to if C p is equal to uh, p, that means, uh, the model involving p minus 1 regressors is uh, almost uh, equivalent to the full model. Okay. Uh, let me illustrate uh, this uh, Mallow statistics uh, using our uh, example. Uh, first, uh, okay, so for p equal to 2, I will calculate the C p value. For p equal to 2, that means, I am considering the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon here p equal to 2. So, I will compute C 2, C 2 is I said it is S s residual 2 by M s residual minus n plus 2 into p, so 2 into 2. So, this one is nothing but 1, 2, 6, Five. This is the S S residual. This is the S S residual by M S residual. No, don't take this M S residual. This uh, M S residual for the full model. Well, uh, wh where is the full model? This one is the. Here is the full model, and you take this M S residual value. Okay, so this is the M S residual for the full model. So, you take uh, so S s residual 2 by 5.98, which is the M s residual for the full model minus 13 plus 4, which is equal to 202.53, right. So, uh, this is the C p value 202.53. Point five uh, is the C p value for this model. Similarly, you get the ANOVA table for the second model and compute the uh, C p value. So, these are the C p values uh, for model involving one regressors and two regressors and uh, these are the C p values uh, for the model involving uh, three regressors and four regressors. So, I said that you know uh, the smaller value of C p uh, or low value of C p indicates uh, better fit and also it should be close to p. So, here uh, you can see that uh, this the three model these three models uh, involving x 1, x 2, x 3 x 1, x 2, x 4 and x 1, x 3, x 4, uh, they are 
acceptable uh, under the CP criteria, okay, because these values are small, I mean especially 3.02 is a small one and uh, low CP value indicates better fit. So, uh, among these models, uh, you know, this one is the best one, but uh, all three are acceptable because they are uh, reasonably small and also close to P. Now, here, see, there is no, uh, the small, small CP is here 138, but of course, it is very far from 2, okay. So, this is not acceptable uh, according to the CP criteria. Uh, now, for two variable case or uh, model involving two regressors, uh, this one is the small one 2.68 and also it is very close to 3. Uh, so, uh, the model uh, which involves x1 and uh, x2 is best one in, I mean, uh, it is a good accepted, uh, acceptable model in terms of the CP criteria. Well, so here, uh, you know, again you can uh, draw the graph of uh, uh, you can plot uh, C p against uh, p. So, here is the p along the x, x, x axis and you plot minimum C p along the y axis. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and here also write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, I because I want to draw this line C p equal to p. Okay, for p equal to 1, uh, the value is something 138. So, it will be somewhere here. For p equal to 2, sorry, for p equal to 2, it is 138. Sorry. For p equal to 2, it is 138. For p equal to 1, it is uh, for p equal to 1, it is 442, and for p equal to 2, it is 138. Uh, so for p equal to 1, it is somewhere uh, here, and uh, for p equal to 3, it is 2.6. So it is below the line 2.6 here. For p equal to 4, uh, for p equal to 4, minimum is 3.02 and for p equal to 5, it is 5. Uh, okay. For p equal to 4, it is 3.02. So, it is somewhere here. and for p equal to 5, it is 5. So, you can see if you draw, now we join them. So, the selection criteria is that uh, you choose a p, uh, small value of C p which is close to p are desirable. Okay. Uh, so, from this uh, uh, graph you can say that I mean uh, for p equal to 3 the value is equal to 2 point uh, 2.68 uh, well so among the two uh, regressor model uh, this one is the best uh, in terms of the cp criteria and uh, among the three 
regressors models uh, all three are uh, acceptable in terms of the CP criteria. And overall if you see you know all the uh, there are we talked about different uh, criteria for evaluating the model. Uh, if you combine them now you know uh, for the two variable model it, it appears that the model involving x1 and x2 is the best one with respect to all the criteria. Uh, and uh, for among the three regressor models you know this one is of course it is good uh, with respect to uh, all the criteria. So, so this is how you know uh, we, we write down all the uh, models uh, involving maximum k minus 1 regressors and then uh, we feed them and we evaluate them in terms of uh, using some criteria and uh, we choose the best model uh, out of the all possible models. Thank you very much.